amazing. Um, who else was on numerous episodes? My best friend Reese, he was literally amazing. Tony was a, one, of, one of our guests as uh, representing her community and just representing our community. You know what I'm saying? Her community is our community. And she was amazing. Like, it was great, you guys. It was absolutely great. And I'm just so proud of... I'm proud of putting my money where my mouth is. Because it's easy to talk that shit. It's easy to talk big shit. It's easy to be like, you know, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Nah, implementing it and doing the work is not always easy. You feel me? Getting getting the support, making sure your funds is right, making sure shit is in order. It's not always easy. When y'all see me dressed and styled and whatnot, all that shit straight out my closet. I didn't bought it myself. It's mine. You feel me? <laughs> it's not that's not always easy, but it gets done. And I want y'all to know that if you got some goals that you want to get accomplished, if you got some shit that you want to get done, it's not gonna always be easy. And that don't necessarily mean that it's not meant for you. It just means you got to work a little bit harder. Like for me, I tell people all the time, even just keeping my cool, keeping my peace, it's not always easy. Because my natural, my natural uh, mindset, my natural state of mind that I use, that I'm, you know, my natural who I am, ain't a positive person. You feel me? My natural state of who I am, I am reluctant to, to talk to people, kind of pessimistic I, uh, point of view with how I look at stuff. Uh, my head is always on a swivel thing, somebody trying to get down on me. But I'm intentional about um, giving peace and being positive and trying to change my mindset to be a more positive mindset. If y'all really want to level up on any type of way, you have to be very intentional about your moves. You got to be very intentional about how you speak into yourself, how you speak into others. If you're not talking to you nice, why the fuck would anybody else talk to you nice? It don't make sense. Y'all just get up, do the work. It's not going to always be easy. Be clear, this weekend, I had, we recorded 10 episodes this weekend. My son was homesick. My oldest son was homesick. Um... So we kind of were balancing that, going back and forth between the set and the house. But thank God to my shout out to my husband. My husband's fucking amazing. Um, you know, we had out of town guests. The weather up here in Detroit is is was hot, not as cold. Was hot, not as cold. Was hot, not as cold. So you know, people when their allergies is messed up, they got these colds a little bit. Sinuses messed up and whatnot. So it's been challenging. Cause if you know me, you know I don't do germs. I'd be like, oh shit, what's going on? Did you sneeze, bitch? Get away from me. <laughs> so it was a bit of a challenge but making minor changes we had minor changes from season one and I am so impressed with my team I am so thankful for my team I'm so thankful for opportunity I'm so thankful that God has given me the space and the grace to be here I'm so thankful that God has given me the space and the grace to have vision I'm so thankful that God has placed what he has placed on my life because I know for a fact that if it wasn't for his His grace and his mercy, I would not be doing what I'm doing right now. Um, I had someone, I want to talk to y'all about this. I had somebody, uh, I had somebody slide in my DMs yesterday and they was like, oh, you a crackhead, da 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 Because I told y'all I was addicted to Xanax at one point in time. First of all, let's talk about this. Um, you can never use information that I gave you about me against me. I gave you the tea. So you can never spill that tea on me. Like, it I, it don't hurt. Like, it's cold tea. It's, it might stain the outfit, but, bitch, it ain't going to hurt me. You feel me? Um, so she's like, you a crackhead. Nah, 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 nah. First off, I wasn't, like, buying Xanax on the street. I was getting Xanax from CVS because my doctor had prescribed it to me. <laughs> so it wasn't like I was doing something that was genuinely um, outright bad. It's prescription drugs are addictive. They are. Um, the feeling that Xanax gave me, I didn't have to care about shit. I didn't have to stay awake. As soon as I took a Xanax, I knew I was going to sleep. As soon as I took a Xanax, I knew I wasn't going to feel what I was feeling. And I would be passed out soon. So, um, hey, shout out to the Moroccans. That's what's up. Uh, I want y'all to realize that when someone is vulnerable or open with you guys, and you try to use it against them, it don't work. You feel me? <laughs> like, but I also see a lot of the times when men say uh, they don't open up to women because they, you know, it's they use it against them eventually and all that. I see that. I get it. I absolutely get it. I swear I really get it. I get it because a lot of the times when, I hate saying that, but when girls do get worked up, they try to hit below the belt. They do. Guys do the same thing, but I feel like it's more of a girl trait. Um, but yeah, I was just explaining to everybody about the show. 
season one, hopefully it'll be out within the next month. And then after that, season two will be right. It will be right behind it. Too many physicians are just pill pushers, persuaded by the financial gain. Being a buck with you, I don't even think that my doctor did any had any ill will or anything like that. My doctor went on that. She gave me the lowest dosage of Xanax. Um, it's just personally, I know I abused it. It's just that simple. Um, when you can't go to sleep without something, when you are panicky because you're like, oh, where where is this next? Where is this coming from? Or if I if I have to go here, if I'm out, what's gonna happen? You, it's, it's some issues you need to work through. So my doctor is an amazing doctor, actually. She's really, really dope. Um, I don't go to her anymore, but she was a really, really dope doctor. I swear to gosh, she wasn't on no bullshit like that at all. But um, yeah, man, life's great. Oh, and then how about this? How about this? I, when, I had a plastic surgeon on my show for season two, right? And as soon as he saw me, he's like, oh, I can cut that off. I said, oh. Yes, get rid of Kiki, because Kiki was never invited to the party, okay? She was never invited to the party, and she popped up, and she got to fucking go, okay? The bitch was never supposed to be here. She was, who are you, darling? Who are you? An unwanted guest. So Kiki gonna go. This was the last season with Kiki. You know what I'm saying? Wants to go on a long drive with me, never in my fucking life. Sounds like hell. Sounds like fucking hell. I hate car rides. I hate car rides. On top of that, no. <sighs> so, yeah, Kiki's getting out of here. Yes, I call my Keloid Kiki because, Kiki, do you love me? I love my Keloid, but she got to go. Isn't Kiki a good nickname for a Keloid? Like... Kiki, listen, listen, I had to have something wrong with me, okay? My my feet are decent looking, and I got keloid skin. God couldn't make me perfect, okay? Because the rest of this shit is 10 on 10 on 10 on 10 on 10, 9-ish. God couldn't give me, he couldn't give me 10s across the whole board. You feel me? He had to give me a little skin issue, keloid skin, psoriasis. You feel me? My feet, they look decent, you feel me? The the toenails could be a little bit bigger, but you know, <laughs> life is life. You know, what I'm saying, Allah, we have arrived. You feel me? But this keloid right here, right here, this keloid, baby, <laughs> you gotta get on. It's time to go. That's I'm about to, as soon soon as I when I'm at the play when I'm at the doctor's office and they do the little shot to numb it and they start to saw it off or oh they might use a laser now. So listen, I knew I had keloid skin because I had a keloid right here before when I was younger, right? But you see how flat that skin is? Because they cut it off and nothing else came back. Listen, this right here, you got to go, baby. It's going to be so flat. I knew I was rolling the dice when I when I got the piercing. But I didn't think it was going to. You don't get a nigga back like that. Bitch, I'm a man with pride. You don't do shit like that. You don't just pop up my ear and leave me big like that. You feel me? <laughs> You said you got rid of yours with a strain, baby. My power to you. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> How do keloids happen? So here, here we go. So when I got my first keloid, I was like, <laughs> I was like 16, right? And when I got cartilage removed, it ASAP and went away. I had, I had a keloid years ago when I got cartilage piercing and removed it ASAP and went away. Okay, so yes, the piercing will literally, um, you have to inject it, freeze it. Okay, so listen, this is what happened. <sighs> this is what happens with keloid skin. When I first got my first keloid when I was 16, I drove myself to a, to a specialist. And she was like, she was German. She, her accent was very, very strong and very, very heavy. And she was like, oh, how did you get here today? And I said, oh, I drove myself. Um, and she was like, wow, um, rich rising sister. She was like, wow, you know where I'm from? Like, you know, kids can't drive today 18 because there's no speed limit on an Audubon. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, whatever. So this is literally, so y'all know my auntie that passed away in December. This is one of her favorite stories. <laughs> so I was like, uh, okay, whatever. So she's like, um, she's explaining to me what the, pr the procedure is going to do to, to get the keloid removed. And, um, 
you know, with me inquiring, I've always been this person. The person that I am today, I've always been. I have just learned how to deliver it with more grace. So I was like, you know, why do like why do I get keloids? And she looked at me and the look in her eyes was like, damn, it is it's about to be a language barrier. So she tried to explain. She was like, um, you know, cartilage, uh, um, black folk get keloid. And I said, what? <laughs> she said, black folk get keloid. Your skin, skin is tougher. Skin is, is black folk get keloid. I let that bitch cut my keloid off, but I ain't never go back to that bitch. <laughs> Cause bitch, what you mean black folk get keloid? You can't explain this shit no other way. <laughs> now, once I did my own research into our scar tissue and how we scar and how our body heals itself, it's really a um it's really like a almost like a superpower. Our body would be like our body be like <laughs> our body be like, all right, hey, is something in here that don't belong in here? Fix it. Get it the fuck out. And we keloid up. I don't know. It's dope, kind of. But Kiki, you out of there. You the fuck out of there. You the fuck out of there. You got to go. You uninvited hoe. Anyways, cousins, I hope y'all have a super good day. I'm about to go lay back down for a second because I just took me a Benadryl. Not because I'm sick, but because I was feeling like I was about to get a migraine. And Benadryl... Motrin and a nap and a uh, nausea pill is what be helping me a lot. So I'm gonna lay down for a second and then I'm gonna go do some work. I love y'all. I hope y'all have a good ass day. I hope y'all following y'all dreams. I hope y'all know that your biggest dream is is, is like an extra earring. Your biggest dream is accomplishable. You have to do the work. You deserve everything, everything that you desire to have as long as you're willing to do the work. Think about it. Good day.